Shut up and sit down. Welcome once again to the Shy Talk Podcast Show, episode number 154. Mark and Ken. Thank God you remember it. Uh, yeah, and I nearly, uh, nearly slipped my head brain. I was like, "Is it? It's one hundred and fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, we discuss it before we go live. Yeah, right. yeah. Like I just about got over the line there. <laughs> and uh, it's. Do you know what? I kind of feel like my story selection has been very different this week. In what way? In like, there's, there's, there's people who who I'm, we're going to be talking about that. Before before this before this research, I actually didn't even know they looked like that. <laughs> like I had no idea what they actually looked like. Um, so like I think our topics today are going to be different. We, well, one of our topics won't be our first topic that we're going to be talking about. It's going to be one that we missed last week. It is a girl who's trying to trade from a hair clip to a house, and we were meant to uh, talk about this. It's meant to be one of our hybrid topics that we just never got out of the mud, I don't think, of last week's show. And we just stayed lowbrow. And yeah, <laughs> we, forgot, we forgot all about going highbrow with our woman who's trying to trade her way to a house. So we'll cover it today. Then you have, yeah, you've been very mysterious, Ken, with your stories. You've really only told me the title handles. And all I have is a lightning story. There's going to be a story... Yes involving lightning uh the girl that i didn't actually know what she looked like and it's because i like have no interest in in this family or whatever is kylie jenner we're going to talk about her because there's a petition to get her removed from a music video and it has reached fifty nine thousand signatures what has she done to piss off so many people we'll be talking about <laughs> what hasn't she done yeah exactly we'll be talking about that and the uh, petition to get her fired. We'll also be the, or get her removed from the video. We'll also be talking about a nose job gone wrong. And yeah. once again, I've 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 no idea what, <laughs> what this story is actually <laughs> going to be about. It's going to be me and you are going to find out about this together. Our listeners, Ken knows, but he's holding his cards, like I said, very close to his chest. It, well, like you all you have to think is that it's a Ken story, and you kind of know where it's going to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about. How like like does he end up with a penis on his nose? <laughs> like like that's where just that that's what I'm imagining in my head. We'll also you have to wait. And find yeah, out. We're, we're we're gonna have to wait to find out. We're also be talking about fat shaming and when is it okay to tell your friends that they've put on a bit of weight? Probably not on a podcast, which I accidentally did last week. <laughs> <laughs> during, during a podcast that you're doing with that person it's probably not the best time to bring up that they're overweight <laughs> <laughs> and we'll also be talking about uh, UFC 4 game it's the power rankings came out but it's game pound for pound best EA Sports are the ones doing the game this year and they have a very interesting uh, top 50 fighters and we'll be breaking down the, the top 50 and talking about some of the surprise number ones and some of the surprise order of a few of the fighters on that as well so like a real mixed show today i had no idea before i did the research what <laughs> what, what kylie jenner actually looked like my sister used to watch the show but like they they have surgery every week so it's, it'd be very hard to like Actually, they did change year to year, but like I was surprised. I was like, "Oh, that's that's what Carly Jenner looks like." Like before and after photos on the internet. Yeah, all I remember is that, like, from the TV show, is that like their faces are so Botox. When they talk, they don't really have a lot of emotions. Their mouths just move, and like, there's no eyebrow <laughs> movement. There's no cheek movement. There's no nothing. There's no like tail. Like what? They're just they're just talking. It's there's, there's no <laughs> visual cues going on there. <laughs> imagine trying to interview them. Oh, be like, yeah. Imagine you're trying to be on like a first date with them. You had no no idea if they're interested or not. They could have the time of their life, and you're like, oh my god, they're just about to fall asleep here. <laughs> they're just oh, I fucking hate them. Uh, do you know what? I still don't know anything about the family. Uh, apparently, fifty nine hundred thousand people agree with you though <laughs> so we've seen what that is all about 
But we'll start off the girl who's on a mission to trade uh in the United States it's called a bobby pin, but it's hair clip for anyone outside the United States, I think. And she's Bobby Pin. Like where does Bobby Pin come from? Yeah, I've I've no idea. Like it makes no sense. Bobby's wouldn't Bobby. generally use them. Yeah. But she's trying to trade a Bobby Pin <laughs> 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 for a house or up to a house. And basically she's twenty nine, she's living in San Francisco. She was inspired by a two thousand and four blogger by Kyle MacDonald and he basically did this with paperclip where he traded within 14 trades a paperclip to a house and it was a four bedroom barn house that he got in the end she was inspired by this guy and there's been a few other kind of stories like this I remember covering I don't know if it was post Ken or prior Ken but there's um I did definitely covered a girl in a festival who who asked for a cigarette, got like a load of weed, got a few beers, and basically trade her trade her way up to like some other hard drug from a barrel <laughs> cigarette. Like barrel, she traded the cigarette for a few cans, a few cans for like I think some like cannabis, and got, then cannabis for like six beers, uh, and then got like the hard drugs off the six beers, like. I can kind of understand that a bit more than I can understand how you're going to get from a hair clip to a fucking house. Yeah, no, like, she's uh, made some solid trades so far. So she's, like, uh, I guess you could say she's halfway through it. And she's been blogging her way through. And she's been massing a massive following along this journey. And this probably might help her get to her goals. But if you think about, like your big purchases in life it goes maybe your first car and then you might might buy a nicer car and then it's a house but there's a long way off like a a nice car which let's say 40 grand for most people be a really nice car most people are in the 20 grand range and most people will never get past the 10 grand range in terms of like car buying so for a person to like if you're to trade from a house which is like a half decent house 250,000 to like like you're far way off even a really nice 40,000 car of getting to like 250,000 yeah like, like and what she's trying to do in what 14 trades uh, I don't know if she set a limit of amount of trades. She's just seeing if oh, she can okay. replicate. Now, the guy, the blogger, uh, Kyle McDonald, he did it in 14 trades. I don't oh. actually know what he traded until he got to the house. But yeah, he, surely she could just try and like, do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> see if people will trade. Well, she she had to go basically what she's off. She started with a hair clip or bobby pin. So she traded her bobby pins for a pair of earrings, it's like it's it's definitely an upgrade. I'd, I'd, I'd imagine a uh, pair of earrings are a lot more like expensive than a hair clip. You can probably buy like thirty hair clips for the same amount of money they'd buy, and like it like five euro earrings. I like, imagine they come as large sets of hair clips. Yeah. So she definitely made an upgrade there. From that, she traded her earrings for. Four cocktail glasses. So Four once, cocktail glasses. So once again, like it's a slight bit of an increase. Like a nice cocktail uh, glasses. Four nice cocktail glasses probably might set you back fifteen to twenty dollars. I imagine, like uh, from like maybe even a five pair of earrings, eight pair of a really nice pair of earrings. Like that's that's still an improvement. Yeah. And if a person likes the earrings, they probably would trade this. She traded. I think. I don't know the exact order, but then she managed to trade, I think, a Hoover for, for the earrings. <laughs> and at some point she got, after the earrings, she got, like, a snowboard. She managed to get, like, MacBook Pro, I think, for, for the snowboard. She got in the rent of trades. She managed to trade herself up the way a car. And she got this, like, camera with, like, a load of the lenses as well and a load of other things to the point where now she has a camper van. She's a camper fan. Yeah, I think... Actually, that's, that's basically a house. Basically a house, but, like, 
where do you go from a camper van? Like, what, what, what next to like? No one's going to trade any like a house for a camper van or even an apartment for a camper van. Like, the most that you'll get is maybe, maybe if someone wants to see it, like, make your goal. They might try, you know, one of those carb, uh, not carbon fiber, like one of those, like, kind of cabins. They're not made out of wood, but they're made out of, like, insulation. Yeah. Maybe someone might try to do one of those for, like, a camper van, but, like, that'd be at a, at a stretch. And then where do you go from there? I know you're kind of out of house that way, but, um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really interesting to see if she, if she actually manages to actually trade. Yeah, like, are you going to keep an eye on her? I'll try, I'll try to keep an eye and see if she gets gets to it. But, like, what, have you ever traded that before? Yeah, not Pokemon cards, probably. Yeah, like, I, I think everyone should trade Pokemon cards. I think the best thing I ever traded was I traded uh, a pair of shoes for skateboard trucks and wheels. I think I got, <laughs> I think I got a pair of skateboard trucks and two pairs of street skateboard wheels. They're really, really thin skateboard wheels, and I felt like I came out on the best part of that deal. Your man was delighted with the with the shoes, but yeah, that, that that's like I think that one of the only few things that I trade. I might have also got a corn CD. Oh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> you know the one with the girl <laughs> skipping. The classic kind of corn cover. Uh, You're not a fan? No. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I don't like corn at all. Yeah, well, that, that's that's what I, I swapped for, like a pair of shoes. And like, I was I was chuffed with that. I don't know how it'd go for, from skate wheels. Maybe maybe some might, might trade me uh, those skate wheels and trucks for a skateboard. Like, but like, I don't know. Were you trading with your friend or like random person? A kind of random person. Uh, well, I kind of knew him. I, I like there used to be skateboard clicks that you, you kind of know people from. You'd all meet up and go skateboarding. Um, and I kind of just like I knew I kind of knew this guy. We hung out a few times, but he's like he I I think he just really liked shoes and I was like, here I'll trade you those. Uh, some like uh, I really like your shoes. Like, do you want to swap for like what you call a uh, some trucks and wheels and stuff like that? And I'm like. Yeah, sure. So, like, did he initiate it? Yeah, he initiated it. He was just like, here, I'll give you all this if you give me your shoes. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, yeah, cool, I have another pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I swapped them, yeah, I swapped them the shoes for all the skateboard like, stuff. How old were you? I was skateboarding, so I was probably in around 12, 13. Like, what, did your, what did your parents say? <laughs> uh, well, they're like... Like I just came back with the like quills and I was like I traded them. And they're like oh okay why? <laughs> I was like it's a really good deal. Like and I was happy. I was like, happy with myself. You know that's that's actually like a very very Mark story. I'm surprised I've never heard this story before. <laughs> like you came home with no shoes. Ah uh, no. What what we did was I walked home, got into my older shoes. Then we walked back to his house. I got the trucks and all that, and then. Uh, we I think we hung out for a bit after that, but then like, then I went home uh, with my skate wheels and my everything, and it was class. I was delighted with myself. <laughs> <laughs> my mum probably they probably, I don't think they're that old shoes either. So my mum probably was like, "I literally just bought you shoes." <laughs> Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> and you swapped them for some like r- old, scruffy-looking wheels, <laughs> <laughs> like used, like metal things that are on the end of your skateboard. What are, are you high? <laughs> <laughs> and a and a corn CD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> I got this and a corn CD. Look at it. <laughs> This is going to be a classic album someday. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that's yeah, that's she, brilliant. Yeah, because like, and I also thought I got duped because that corn CD starts at thirteen, and then so I was like, I I put it on, I was so I was so, I was so ready to listen to to the CD and nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing, and so like I think I was playing my PlayStation and I like so I was like I put it on, I was like this thing is broken, but never like. I never hit stop or pause. I just left it go. I was like, ah, oh. I was c- continue playing whatever game I was playing at the time. And then, like, half an hour 
into like into me playing PlayStation. I hear this noise and I go, Jesus, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> like it starts at thirteen. Oh, it starts at like there's no tracks up until thirteen. Yeah, there's no there's, there's, fuck all tracks, which is a pain in the hole because then you like if you want to listen to the CD, you have to skip till thirteen. Like yeah. it, it, within a CD, which is like you, you have to skip a lot. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's 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 my brilliant. only that's I think that's my only um that's my only like trade store. I love to haggle now when I'm um Oh of course you do. <laughs> when when I'm like on holidays. I I love a good haggle. But there is this <laughs> other thing of like I see like it's a wash on on Facebook, which is people raffling off houses. Yeah, I see yeah, there's a lot of scams with it though. Like they do it with cars as well. Like there's a lot of like scam ones as well. Like there's some real ones and there's a lot of scams. Yeah. Now, I remember we were the story we were going to cover. It's about this couple, and they're trying to sell their house for. I think I moved to Australia. I think they're like they work in the medical industry, and they're also like the tickets like one pound, and I, yeah. I don't know. I don't have the notes here of like how much the house is worth. But I think it's like a, a three series BMW and a house for one pound. And I think there's like 300,000 tickets going for at least 300,000. Because I did look into it to see what's the story. But they're trying to move to Australia by October. So they're in a hurry. And they didn't want the way everything is right now. They felt like selling their house would be really hard. Or maybe they wouldn't get the same amount of money forward as they would as it's probably worth so they'd raffle off the house and car for one pound and that's the way they're gonna like do it but like i was kind of thinking this i was like i thought at first it was like a pretty good idea because i was like if you're a house developer and you have like let's say you, you you like there's probably in a situation now where you build loads of houses and because of like the downturn in the economy People aren't working. There's going to be probably for next two years less ho- houses bought. So you might have a house, load of housing estates that are kind of sitting idle. Like even if you take three of those houses that are worth, let's say, 300,000, 350,000, you sell, sell a ticket for 100 euro and you sell about 10,000 tickets, like you're going to make a million quid off that house that you only would have got by 350. And even if you got, sold like 5,000 tickets... Five hundred thousand, yeah. Like you're gonna make you're gonna make more money. I know that would eventually inflate the prices of houses because what I did just do is like instead of buying houses, people just raffle houses, and in yeah. order in order to buy the house, you'd have to get the same end that the average raffle would get. Let's say five thousand people, so a three hundred fifty thousand house would come five hundred thousand. I think there's laws in Ireland anyway around raffling. I think in terms of it has to be for a charity. It can't be for just for profit. So I remember, like, when I was doing a community radio station, we used to have a lot on that show, but it was literally to raise money just for the station itself. So you, they couldn't like be making that. I don't think you can be profiting on earnings from these things. No, that's nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like if like the people who are selling houses were doing it, I know a lot of them are for GA clubs. So there's one going. For a Roscommon GA club, that's the the apartment's in like in London, and it's going for I think it's worth eight hundred thousand is what they're saying, and the, the like, tickets are a hundred euro a ticket, and you could win this eight hundred thousand apartment in London. We should do a raffle for the show. Yeah, I don't think we have a house to give away. No, we'll give away a mug, a shy talk mug. It would have to create a shy talk mug. Yeah, yeah, we could make a mug with the profits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like uh, i think you have to ha- physically have have it but yeah we could possibly do a raffle raffle off different <laughs> things like uh shoes or <laughs> <laughs> what's what's we giving away shoes <laughs> they just have no value to me <laughs> 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 but like yeah it's kind of weird I, I i just think like for a person who has an eight hundred thousand apartment sitting around in london wouldn't it be easier just to write a check rather than giving away an apartment? You just go here. Here's like here's forty grand. Like there you go. I'll give. I'll donate forty grand to your club every year. Because surely 
that's a lot you have that if you if you have like an 800,000 apartment just lying around that you want to get rid of to like a fucking GAA club that you're going to be like you're going to probably have a bit of money in your account maybe you couldn't sell the apartment yeah yeah possibly with the downturn but he's not going to make any money from it like it'd be different if he was doing it for profit I kind of understand that and even if he was only going to like he was only going to sell enough tickets that to make make a profit from it and then any other money they made off it from ticket sales he would give out a secondary prize of like whatever like maybe like a holiday to like Japan <laughs> to Japan I don't know That's- that's very random. Okay, Spain. Spain's kind of... We kind of can't go to Spain right now uh, and Irish people don't know where else to go other than Spain. We're kind of like, uh, where else is there? Japan? Yeah, yeah let's go there. Or Turkey. Yeah, I mean, a lot of yeah. people go to Turkey. Uh, it's mostly Spain. Yeah, it's mostly Spain. It's mostly still Spain. Some do go to Turkey. Turkey was cool there for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Turkey's kind of fancy. Uh, Greece was another place that popped up for a bit as well. Yeah, and Cyprus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Irish people love Cyprus. Yeah, Cyprus was a thing for a while there. Yeah, um, but I think I think twenty twenty one, uh, Japan could be the place for Irish people to go. <laughs> <laughs> you hear it here first, but yeah, I think it's mad that people are just like like giving these GAA clubs uh, houses to raffle off. Yeah, like, like a, lot, a lot of them are like GAA clubs as well. Like I know, I think the local GAA club where I live, they actually bought a house. There's like a new housing estate been built, and they bought a house. How do they have the money to buy a house? Like, oh, we should explain this for our American listeners. Like, the GAA, uh, Gaelic football, traditional game that's played in Ireland, it's played as a, as a, like a professional sport. There's as yeah. much money put into it as a professional sport. It is the biggest sport in Ireland. Uh, and There's players, no yeah, players don't get fuck off from a... I think managers might get money for it, but it's basically run like college basketball, college football. Like the players play for pr- free. They all kind of get like free massages, physio work. They all kind of they, they treat like yeah, they, they all have other jobs. Like they're all like they you know, guards. And yeah, sword. but yeah, but like, in terms of the facilities in these clubs, would be like you you might see in other kind of high end clubs, other kind of professional sports. You'd see physios, personal trainers in clubs like that that would coach them but like in terms of players making any money from it they don't make money from this um so the fact that like this this sport is like just there's just people giving away houses in order to raise a lot of money for different clubs around in their community they just give the club a house <laughs> they're just like here's a house and yeah. then they raffle they they'll raffle that off and they'll use that money then to fund their club yeah, like around the one here, like they actually bought a house to raffle it. To raffle, like yeah, yeah. The, the, the kind of like it is the done thing. Like I know, look, generally when you see it, it's for a GA club, like I don't take your word that that it, that like it isn't a scam. Make sure, but like obviously do your d- diligence to raffle. Generally, are did clubs will? There's been several kind of clubs that have actually given away houses like it is a co- it is coming a common thing for clubs to give away property <laughs> apparently it's kind of the, <laughs> the now done thing around because it's like the new it's a new thing that the guy are up there well a lot of the problem around w- would be around funding for the ga because dublin would have got so much funding because they're so much better than the rest of the counties when it comes to ga and they complain because it's the money that's pumped into uh, Dublin GAA. So apparently there's a lot of rich folks around uh, who live in other counties <laughs> are just giving them houses to sell off. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, it's, yeah. it's a bit mental. Like, 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 I don't, yeah, I don't like, really fully understand what the fuck goes on with it. In a way, like I, I think it's a good idea for, like in terms of, there are going to be people out there that just like, will not be able to afford a mortgage based off their living circumstances. Either their job doesn't pay enough or they are currently in true college or they might might be with a partner or the partner mightn't be able to work for whatever reason. And they just can't save up enough money. Uh, or they've gotten themselves into kind of bad debt as a as a like a teen or early adult, the point where like their credit history is just shot. Like they're not gonna get it. So the idea that like you could win a house mortgage free 
and be in your like your early thirties, early twenties, like th- like that the idea to like Irish people is like if, if nearly as good as winning the lotto. Obviously, if you win the lotto, you could you could do you could <laughs> buy yourself <laughs> buy a house, <laughs> Just buy a house, like and, and give uh, it to the guy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. buy two houses and a pair of shoes and give the get to the guy. <laughs> so like I think the idea to give like someone in like maybe your community a chance of like winning a house mortgage free like that's like on paper but in terms of like your chances of winning this like they're like, they're probably going to sell, sell like 10,000 tickets 5,000 tickets yeah so you have a 1 in 5,000 chance of actually winning this this like lottery if you if you enter it as a whim once off it's a 100 euro like uh, you're probably You'll probably ha- you probably like not gonna break the bank. However, if you're entering these time and time again, trying to win time and time again, that money could be probably put to a mortgage of a house down the line. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> so. It's like I think I think it's a good idea as long as people don't like constantly be entering them like obsessively because like that money will eventually like that's that hundred euro could eventually turn into two hundred euro, turn into three hundred euro, turn into four hundred euro. That you could be putting off uh, off a mortgage, or saving up for a mortgage yourself. Yeah, like it's it's the same with like the like actually doing the law. Like I I I don't fully understand people that do it like all the time. Yeah, like I understand like the more more times you do, it, the better odds you have of winning. It. But also like I wonder like has anybody ever calculated like how much money they spent on it? I was yeah, and what they would have had if they've just put that money, like I know some people who spend ten, fifteen euro on scratch cards, and yeah, like scratch cards are the worst one. Like, like I really don't understand why the fuck you're going and spending a shitload of money on scratch cards. Well, uh, do, do you know what I think it is? It's because the you get kind of a reward quicker from the scratch cards. So like you buy a scratch card and you might win a scratch mark. So you get kind of like a kind of dopamine response of like winning something. So your body, your body, your brain signals that as like, Ooh, I won something. So it gives you kind of like that dopamine response. So you get that more often with uh scratch cards than you do with, let's say win a lot or you might only win, like you might, mightn't get anything. Like you might go a few weeks where we win anything in a lot and then you might get two euro. Whereas I think, Nine times out of ten, you'll at least win your ticket, uh, a free ticket every now and again. Like you will get, you will win more times on scratch cards than you do on low. So it's kind of like you get more of a dopamine rush. That's what I think it is. Yeah, like I just don't like scratch cards. I'm going to spend twenty euro on scratch cards to win two. Yeah, like to win maybe. Yeah, I would say like if you spend twenty euro, you might get two free tickets and yeah, maybe four euro. You might end up nine euro at the end of it. I know a lad, his first ever scratch card won 500 euro. <laughs> like, he got a, a present for his, like, 18th birthday and won 500 euro. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's 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 a pretty good return on that. He probably should have just never bought a scratch card again and just, like, yeah. lived off that winnings, like, to say, like, oh, won you done. <laughs> live off that live winnings. <laughs> I'm going to live off this 500 euro. <laughs> Three weeks later, I need another scratch card. <laughs> 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 the last one ran now but we'll better move on to our story so you have a story about a no job I think is it that went wrong or no we'll do the lightning story first right the lightning story so yeah. there's um, this man in Spain now, th- this is a short enough story so this 61 year old man in Spain and uh, he was in his garden obviously like Again, for Americans or whatever, there's like the weather in Europe has been kind of weird recently. There's been a lot of thunderstorms and shit going on. And he's out in his garden, just like watching the rain with an umbrella. And he has the umbrella in his uh, in his hand or whatever, obviously. And he gets struck by lightning. But he gets struck by lightning in his left leg. <laughs> and the only injury he sustained was it burnt the shit out of his genitals. <laughs> what? Yeah. I was like, I was like, all right, this is this is a different story for Ken, and then bang, right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no further standard update. Ken story. So yeah, there's no more updates on how he's doing around. Paramedics came to his house, 
treat him at home then rushed him to hospital because obviously his balls were burnt to bits so like it, well, his leg was grand yeah his leg was grand but whatever way the lightning hit his leg it, like it burnt his arse and his genitals oh they like bounce off, the, off his like shoe and then hit him straight in, straight between the legs no like it hit him in like the left thigh that's weird yeah is it kind of like you know like when they say if you hold on to an electric fence <laughs> yeah with yeah, shoes on that. yeah yeah of everybody's done that uh, like uh, <laughs> yeah because you're wearing shoes it doesn't electrocute you but like it never tingles your your genitals <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> I don't know why lightning does <laughs> yeah that's what happened to him you got the balls blasted off by a ball, ball to lightning and was was like did you not hear like rumbles of thunder yeah he he went outside to like look at it oh like with an umbrella, I know you got didn't get hit through the umbrella. Yeah, yeah, like it's kind of a dumb <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> oh, it's definitely a dumb thing to do. Oh my god! Uh, and there's no like, there's no kind of like, his uh, he's gonna lose his left nut or he got second degree burns and can't sit down for a week. No, like it only happened. What day is today? It only happened like a couple of days ago, so like I imagine, no further he, I imagine he can't even wear pants. Like for, a, oh, I, I imagine like they're probably melted to him. Oh my god, uh, that yeah, I, that's whatever he was wearing. I would say is melted onto him, like yeah, like it's a uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 horrific. That is. <laughs> Have you, yeah, it's, it's not a good situation. Have you ever burnt anywhere sensitive, like or anything like that, like even sunburn? Not really, just kind of like usual sunburn places. Yeah, no, no, like I, I had a horrific burn there, like in terms of like I got some burnt, but like I'd never, I never like have been that. Like I think my feet were the only like really bad place that I got burnt. But I remember, yeah. like, I remember going to Wexford and it was like eighteen degrees. And it was cloudy, and there was a bit of wind, and I, I, me and my friends only brought factor fifty to to the beach. <laughs> and so we're like, we want to get tanned, so we're not going for. Oh, was this a couple of years ago? Yeah, yeah, I remember. And this. we got horrifically burned to the point where I I actually had to go to the chemist and <laughs> ask for not not aloe vera cream. But stuff that, like, if you got a second degree burn, because I show, showed them a picture of me and they gave me, like, stuff that, if you got a second or third degree burn, what they'd give you to, like, try to cure it. <laughs> and, like, I, I, like, I got, definitely suffer, was suffering from sunstroke, but I didn't know, like, it happened on, like, a, I think it's Sunday, and I didn't actually realize I was suffering from uh, heat stroke till about Wednesday. <laughs> it was, like, 22 degrees, which is in Ireland, just, like, roasting. And, like obviously it's really hot so your like parents would have windows and doors open i'd come down like ratty as hell with like two hoodies on <laughs> and a hat slamming the door i was like why the hell do you have the doors open it's fucking freezing they're like mark you definitely have a temperature i was like i don't have a temperature you have a weird condition about leaving stuff open it's like <laughs> they're like you're suffering from heat stroke and i was like i'm not suffering from heat stroke you're suffering from heat stroke. <laughs> yeah. and like one of my friends he said he just woke up in the middle of the night pace around his room and was just screaming but had absolutely no <laughs> no uh, no memory of it his parents like were just like what is wrong with him <laughs> what drugs is this lad on <laughs> yeah. yeah so like I imagine this guy is going to be in a world of pain right now like that My... was pretty bad and that was just like that was just regular sunburn imagine that around your nuts and arse yeah that would be horrific like yeah just like, keep doing... I remember when uh, we were kids, we went to Tremor or somewhere, and um, my dad went to sleep under an umbrella. But when he was asleep, the like <laughs> the shade moved, <laughs> and he's like he was lying face down, and he got like the soles of his feet got burnt. Oh face. <laughs> my god, your feet are so bad to get burned. They are really like you get your, you get your feet burned once, and it'll never happen to you again. He couldn't drive home or anything like. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's that's <laughs> it's horrific. Like it really is that bad. Uh, get your feet <laughs> burnt. Yeah, oh, uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so we're, our th- thoughts and prayers 
are with your man with his like sore sore, sore Mickey and Brent Genitals. <laughs> Hopefully everything comes do you know what like, I know a guy who got burnt and everything came back ticker. No, I didn't I don't know my friend knew him. So maybe maybe there might be like a bit of a, like inf- information down low if he was ever short in that department. What do you mean everything came back ticker? Well, so in his thing, he he was driving a train, and something happened where the oh, basically the electrics was mixed up in this old steam train. So when he put his hand on the brakes, basically it was like all the electricity went through him. So he kind of got cooked from the inside out. And oh, Jesus. it caused it caused his like like his nerve endings to swell, so he's just constantly in pain now because his basically nerve endings are rubbing off stuff constantly. So he's in yeah. a horrific amount of pain because of, he survived it. But like, yeah, like he just like he's just in an awful state because of it. His like dream was like to to like operate one of these old fashioned trains. So he he got his dream job and like that happened. It was horrific. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. No, it was like, yeah, a tragic story. It's like my friend put it up on uh, on Facebook because he was a friend with this like guy from when he was like childhood friend. He moved away. He moved like to Isle of Man or something like that. His parent, yeah. his, I think his dad got a job there, and then like he ended up getting his dream job when he was a kid. All this is all he ever talked about from a kid was like being this train train conductor. Managed got his dream job, and then this happened to him. Jesus. Yeah, no, it's like horrific. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is he all right now? Like, yeah, yeah. I think he just smokes like weed to like cure himself of pain. It helps like relieve some lot of pain. And yeah, like he's just yeah, he's constantly in pain. He can t- he, like he's 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 all his functions and probably got a pretty good payout off the insurance or off the train like conductors or whatever. So he probably got a good payout. Probably doesn't have to work ever again. But um, in terms of like he's constantly in pain. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, a person who would never have to worry about working again is uh, Kylie Jenner. She is <laughs> the youngest ever billion billionaire. Uh, kitten. These segues are getting better and better, man. <laughs> I know. I'm really, really trying to nail the segues. Yeah. I. Do you know what? I put my hand up. I, I didn't actually know what Kylie Jenner actually looked like. Like, fairly nice, decent ass. In fairness to her, she's a very nice, de- decent ass that was on full show in Cardi B's new video. W. Well, like, she did pay for it. Like, I know she did. The whole family had a lot of work done. So, however, however, like much money she put into her ass, she got her, got a good money's worth out of it. She has a very nice ass. She probably could have <laughs> done that to like exercises and times in the gym, but like, like everybody has their own way of doing things. I guess she has a lot of money, so she put it into her ass. <laughs> How many times did you say ass in the last minute? I don't know. There was a lot of ass in this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, It was kind of on my mind. She, the reason why we're talking about this video isn't because of all the ass. It's because of Kylie Jenner. Because she's annoyed a lot of Cardi B's fans for her just appearing in the video. So much so that a petition was created just a few a few days ago. And it was amassed 59,000 signatures calling for Kylie Jenner to be removed from this music video why uh, so okay no idea about anything but like like i said i didn't know what kylie jenner looked like so this is a complete outsider looking into it so i decided do you know what i might as well watch the video see what the whole fuss is about <laughs> and then make up my mind and my god there is a lot to give out about this, about this video but at no point did i ever think Kylie Jenner would be the thing like if someone said this video is going to get amassed 59,000 signatures for a complaint about the movie guess what it was it never would have crossed my mind that Kylie Jenner would be the person it caused the complaint about so first of all this song basically is every single Cardi B song basically they want a the guy to fuck them hard what the idea of this is this video and it's a pretty <laughs> risky video like there's like there's a, where Cardi B is basically in this kind of swimsuit thing it's like kind of a leopard print she has these kind of remember that music video where your one had the nipple plasters and the nipple one of the nipple plasters nearly came off oh I like the MTV awards yeah yeah it was at the MTV Janet awards Jackson. Janet da- Jackson yeah you know Janet Jackson's kind of nipple plaster things it was kind yeah. of like them 
everything was on show. Nothing was is basically in this video is left to imagination, and all of that was okay. But the fact that Kylie Jenner was in the video was a big no no. Why? Basically, the petition is called Change.org Petition, and it reads: The video was perfect <laughs> until I saw K, and then I wanted to throw my phone away. The bit that catches me there is the music video was perfect. Like everything about that video was a okay. She thought it was a perfect music video, and then seeing Carly <laughs> Jenner and basically want to throw her probably five hundred, seven hundred euro phone away because she's seen Kylie Jenner in the video. <laughs> She's barely in the video, by the way. The way you see Kylie Jenner is she she appears in video for, like, you blink it and you miss her. But she appears in a hallway and she kind of looks slightly animated. But anyway, I think she always looks slightly animated. That's just her <laughs> natural she, look, I think. Yeah, she, she just has that look about her, a slightly animated person. And she's kind of in slow motion. Once again, it could be just the way she walks. And she basically <laughs> enters this room. And that, that's basically it. You get to see her ass. Fine, fine piece of work at that. Uh, she's in a kind of a leotard, leopard print leotard. Like, once again, like everything in this video, nothing's left the imagination everything's on show kind of a thing but like in terms of like she doesn't really do too much she kind of walks into a room and then then, then that's basically it so it's kind of weird as a person that doesn't know anything about this culture doesn't watch the kardashians why people hate her so much and apparently the, her uh, cameo appearance in this the reason why it has caused so much animosity towards cardi b fans is because the Kardashians has been accused before of culture appropriating. Oh. And, yeah, so, like, are you aware of what culture appropriating is? Yeah, you know the way Americans celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. Yeah, that's cultural appropriation. That, basically, yeah. You know American Americans St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> basically that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Halloween, yeah, it's that. Yeah, yeah, it's Halloween. Yeah, that, that, that's cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation right there. The more you look into this petition, more that it just screams to mind, and it's not really said in anywhere in the article, as this this whole petition is basically just racist. It's basically a racist rant of uh, several Cardi B fans, and it hasn't really been called, as far as I know, as called out being racist. So one of the fans said, I'm happy to enjoy my daily cup of brown, until the culture stealing colony showed up and made me spill. I don't know what spill is. Uh, spill? Yeah, I don't know. What the fuck's that mean? Don't know. <laughs> and then the nurse said the culture vulture Kardashian, uh, Jennifer Get Her Out, was another one. And then <laughs> it said, I was enjoying the video when I, all of a sudden she appears uh, coming across my screen. You all could think was... Why is she here? She's uh, <laughs> not entertaining. Uh, she's the only woman that isn't entertaining in the video. And then another one saying, I'm signing because it's time to stop inviting them into our space. They never invite them into our space? Yeah, yeah, they never invite us into theirs. They take every part of our culture, but hate us all the time. So, yeah, so like definitely the last one's definitely racist. Um <laughs> The, the middle one, yeah, probably is covering up racism and, yeah, I don't, like, culture of also Kardashian. And the call, like, I don't know, I I think, like, I'm not too sure where these, these family come from. Like, the Kardashians? Yeah. But, uh, Armenia. They, I, yeah, I think they're Armenian. Uh, Armenian. Uh, they're not, they're not, like, from, like, they probably don't have, British ancestors that were the colonies of America, so to call them, yeah, or Italians, yeah, yeah. So like, I don't know, like, if you, if it's appropriate to call them colonies. No, I don't know where the mother's from, but I know the father was Armenian. Yeah, he's Armenian. He's like Italian, so I wouldn't say they're like like colonies or even to call someone a colonier. Really, doesn't know too much about their about the culture anyway. But yeah, it's kind of weird. Like this, it hasn't been called out. It's just been plain racist. If this was the other way around, I'm pretty sure it would, like, it would be pretty quickly called out of being a racist. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah. So, but like the whole idea, like, of 
of different cultures is that we get to experience different cultures is that we're able to take things from cultures and mix them with our own culture and create something new but like everything is cultural appropriation like have you got running fucking water in your house yeah that came from like the fucking romans yeah like everywhere is just t- taking ideas and it's very it's haircuts people get their hair cut that that's cultural appropriation yeah, or even like mohogs, or people going for mohogs, or people going for a mullet. Yeah. Are we all going to like? Are we going to criticize Australians for like having mullets? Yeah, like ugh. even now, it's a lot of nonsense. Yeah, so like, I don't, I don't, I don't really think cultural appropriation is like. I think it's nice when people like see see stuff from cultures and just use use it and they make it their own. Like that, that's like that's how we got all the cool things we have right now, like rock music, like yeah. hip hop, um, like graffiti art, all was taken from somewhere or influenced off something and then created to make something better. Yeah. Like it's all, uh... imagine if like, imagine if ta- tattoo artists like in America only did like basically cat's heads and never like experimented with like koi fishes or Japanese art. Yeah. Imagine if they like, never mixed. A lot of um a lot of people that tend to complain about these things will more than likely probably have some sort of a tribal tattoo. Yeah. But they're not members of any tribe. Or or Japanese writing when they're not Japanese. Yeah, or that Samoan thing is kind of big at the minute. Yeah, well, actually having any Samoan heritage. Yeah. Like, if it means that much, you okay, fair enough. But like, I don't think I don't think you should be banning people from videos for being a culture appropriation. Probably black black culture. That's that's generally what they are. are but kind of. Um, now, I could be wrong here, but who whose music video is it? Cardi B's. Is Cardi B not black? Yeah. So if Cardi B is black and she got her non-black friend to appear in a music video, what's the problem? So like basically, she said it's they're complaining that it's she basically had to have a white person in for for the PC police and that they should have just kept it as a black person's music video and saying that uh, the Kardashians basically steal from black culture and that they they're, they just don't want to see. A white person in a black person's music video. I think it's Jenny. If, if you were to really say anything about it, I'd say more than likely it's uh, Cardi B trying to use the fact that Kylie Jenner is probably a lot more famous than her to boost views of her music video. Yeah, now like uh, Cardi B's came out and completely damned the whole criticism of using a white person. Like she completely come out and criticize uh, her fans for. Uh, even bringing up the fact that they're using a uh, Kardashian or anyone based off their criticizing anyone based off their c- color of their skin. So it, like this is obviously just a subsect of her fans and not indicative of like the black community in America. At all. But yeah, it's just basically, it is just basically a load of r- racist rants. <laughs> it's, it's just funny. Yeah. Uh, should we move on? Maybe get away from, an area that we don't know, and one that you like, it's about a nose job gone wrong. But you've said <laughs> that it's a typical Ken story. A typical Ken story. So imagine something happens to his nose at some point. In, like, obviously, he's having a nose job, like that, that, like something does happen to his nose, but it's going to go horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> so, this, this guy in Croatia. He's uh, he's 50 years old, and ever since he was a child, he decided, I don't think now that these were a thing when he would have been a child, but whatever, he he wanted to look like a Bratz doll. All right. So he started, in 1992, he started having plastic surgery. Um, he's had three nose jobs, Botox, cheek implants, jaw and chin fillers, all to try and make him look like a Bratz doll. Like I remember my youngest sister playing with brats, like but like I'm pretty sure when we were when we were growing up it was Ken, Action Man, and yeah, for Americans it would probably be GI Joe, which is the like what our Action Man is called. Yeah, like I I I don't know, maybe it's just like he had an image and was like a brat. So I don't know, but 
His most recent nose job was in 2017. There's something wrong with his septum, so he had to have a nose job to correct his septum. He came out of the, the surgery with his brand new nose and an erection he couldn't get rid of. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah. So he was stuck with this erection for three months. I googled because I, once, I couldn't remember what brat stalls looked like. And yeah. there are no male black brat stalls that I can no. see. So, yeah, no, there isn't. So he wanted to basically, like, did he want to just basically look similar like to features like big eyes, like small yeah, nose? Yeah, I, th- I think that's basically it, yeah. Like, there's a photo of him, like, and his face looks really fucking weird. There are other girls. There is an image of a girl who looks like she's similarly wanted to look like a brat stall and basically had her face changed to make herself look like a brat stall. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't know if she's currently turned on, like, constantly turned on based off the surgery. Obviously, his went wrong. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, like he ended up with like an erection for three months and he needed three more surgeries to fix it. And uh, he said, like, obviously it was incredibly painful or whatever, but the doctors have no idea why this happened. That's that, like, like that's, uh, yeah, that, that like, he has it. He has a theory himself, like he, he claims that it's down to um a supplement that he took to try and boost his sex drive. Possibly could do that and not the surgery then. And <laughs> and he's like now he's uh he's after starting up this like Was it like was the like thing he took was was just a lot of oysters? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Eighty four oysters. It was. I think it was thirty. I think it was thirty two oysters. Yeah. That you have to you have to take in order to like um, boost your sex drive. So like once again, our podcast obviously came too late for him. And if he had just listened to the Shy Talk podcast show, we he would have known. He would have known how to boost the sex drive. Yeah. And yeah, like I guess like. As a teenager, you're you're used to having to try to hide boners all the time. So like he he would have been like he's fifty now, so he would have been forty seven. Yeah, yeah, he would have been forty seven. Like forty seven year old knowing what a brat stall is, is kind of weird. Yeah, like like, and then he he started. He claims that it happened to more people than you realize. So he started a support group for people who look like brat stalls. <laughs> for people who have surgery and end up with an erection, like is that really a problem? I don't know. <laughs> like, I guess there's like you're not gonna be wear able to wear like tight jeans, but like like I said, like I think every lad when you're when you're in school has had a, had to hide erections, like when they're in secondary school. Like it's just like if you be in geography learning about soil creep and <laughs> there's nothing erotic happening at all and you'll have a boner and then the school bell will ring for you to change class and you're like holy shit what do i do now and like you just figure it out you just figure out ways of like disguising that bad boy <laughs> you hope or else you just you, you're just walking around school with a, a giant boner on all the time <laughs> Not knowing what's going on. The people are just staring clear of you. <laughs> what is that guy t- thinking about? Yeah, what's up with that lad? Like? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'd get a name. Like, you figure it out if you, if you ever oh, you, Yeah. I think you probably get sent home. <laughs> you need to go to his room for 15 minutes and just, like, just turn on the TV. <laughs> he, he, he has to just deal with himself here. <laughs> Oh jeez! <laughs> yeah, so like, um, but like, so like, it's not the like, hardest problem to solve. Just like maybe like use your underwear to hold it up somewhere, or like wear baggy pants. <laughs> wear baggy pants. <laughs> bit bit of, like masking tape every now and again. That's the the Mark Mark Kearns, uh, what would you call it? Advice for <laughs> like how to hide uh, the fact that you have. A, a giant boner. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wear tight jeans and maybe use your underwear. Sounds like it comes from experience. Every every lad at some point in their life 
was in the situation where they're in a very public place and they had a boner and they had to hide it. Like, like that has happened to every single lad. Generally, it's in school because you're at that age. We don't all go into tutorials, though, Mark. I'm the same. <laughs> Personal experience. This is what you can do. Or hands in pockets. Hands in pockets. Our hands in pockets. <laughs> hands in pockets because you just you want to disguise the shape. Okay, Sca- <laughs> the shape is very recognizable. It's about creating other shapes to diffuse that sort of shape. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm just glad I'm not in those days anymore. <laughs> School? Yeah. Well, no, like, half of the disguise randomly uh, boners. Um, I guess when you're 50 years old, you'll probably, well, he won't now, probably miss the days of having to randomly hide boners. He's probably at it again now, actually. Well, he's now permanently at it, yeah. That's what I say, other than him. Like, at least he got his sex drive back. I don't, it's, I imagine that he's a gay. Oh, that was the thing. It said, like, that he um he had absolutely no sexual desire while this was going on. Yeah, I, like, I imagine he's not cur- permanently turned on, but he's just that permanent boner. But, yeah, but, like, he, like, he didn't even want to do anything about it. It was just too sore. He, oh, it's just really, yeah, if it's sore, then, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. It's like having a, I guess, a, a Ferrari, but you can't find the keys. Yeah, or you can't drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have, you can't drive. You haven't learned how to drive. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's unfortunate because you always could get your. It's like it's basically like having <laughs> your dinner. Or, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's like it's like having your dinner made and not being hungry. Like it's it's there when you when you get hungry. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that it's also he's in pain while he has it is it's probably a, b- a bigger problem. <laughs> it's definitely a bigger problem. <laughs> yeah, he's have to, he has to go through it. He's have to like break through that p- uh, pain barrier. Like what I, I haven't figured out, what I would like to know is um, where like he had to have three other surgeries to sort this out. Yeah. So like did he have the three other surgeries on his nose? Like, was it a problem caused by the nose surgery? Is he? Does he still have an erection, or, or did he like solve this? No, problem? he had it for like three months. He needed three three operations in three months to get rid of it. I imagine there was like some kind of like nerve ending that was basically causing him to have an erection. That someone was touching off a nerve ending in his brain that was causing. Like, his brain to constantly be sending blood there. It's just mad, like, whatever he's at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> it is. It's like, it's fucking... Like, like, it's odd. Like, this is a very Ken story. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that, anyway. Yeah, that's that, anyway. Um, Yeah, so, like, I think we sh- probably won't have time for the UFC rankings. And we'll probably have to finish on fat shaming. Fat shaming, yeah. So we might come back to the UFC rankings on a different show. Fat shaming, surprisingly, last week when we were talking about vegan foods, we were debating whether or not vegan foods, if they should use typically meat terms like chicken or sausages or rashers or like sausage rolls in their products. And somehow we got from that into Ken being fat. And I kind of... <laughs> Lake Ken out to dry in terms of him being like basically a shit diet and being overweight. <laughs> like I didn't mean to. It probably wasn't the best place to bring up. So today we are talking about fat shaming. Is it okay? And when is it appropriate to tell a friend or someone that you care for that they're overweight? Like, right? I think generally people are going to know anyway. Yeah. To start with, like, and. I like it doesn't bother me like when people say like I know obviously I put on a bit of weight it doesn't bother me when people say it because I know it I take the piss out of myself so I don't really care yeah but like I don't know I suppose you would know by your friend like some friends some people are obviously more sensitive to things yeah I think if you if you struggled with weight all your life and you've maybe went on diets and they haven't worked and you tried exercising and haven't has hasn't nothing has what you've tried has actually paid off, and but you're still the same size you you are, and you can't figure out what you need to do, or else you couldn't be arsed. To, either you know what you need to do, but you couldn't be arsed. You can't you can't you don't have the willpower 
to actually get you to where you need to be in terms of losing weight. You've kind of just over, like, you're 35 now. You're I'm metabolic- 32, you bollocks. I thought you are 35. <laughs> <laughs> so you're 32, uh, and so, like, you're, you're at that age where your metabolism is going to slowly start dropping, and you're going to, most people around, like, 29 to 35 will start uh, putting on a little bit of weight. Over time, you naturally will put on weight. Obviously, some people put, put on faster. But imagine if you were, like, f- from childhood, you're struggling with weight. It's more of a sensitive topic. Yeah. One, one, like, okay, I think it's easier to do cons of why fast shaming isn't okay. So, and we kind of touched on this before. Like, they'll probably already have a fair idea that they're over like you're not really putting out something to them that they didn't already know basically is what we are we were saying saying they're well aware of it so you pointing that out to them not necessarily won't actually won't actually you're not really giving them a solution if you're all all you're doing is like calling them fat like so saying you're overweight and not giving like pretty good advice on like nutrition or ways to improve it and then then the second thing generally people who are pointing out to you aren't nutritionists and don't know a whole lot about nutrition to begin with in the first place. So a lot of times, like, people might say, oh, you're overweight, and then proceed to give you, like, health advice based off you being overweight, which is complete fucking nonsense. Yeah, I don't... It's it's not really ever okay to fat shame, but there's a difference between, like, fat shaming and, like, taking the piss out of your friends. Only if your friend takes the piss out of themselves anyway. Yeah, like, uh, obviously... You, you've you've obviously made joke about you putting on weight. We've obviously yeah. joked about like, like in the gym. Like it was, it's kind of a topic that I knew. Like saying saying you're overweight to it won't really have an effect. If I know a person yeah, like, is overweight and maybe has a problem with their weight or or is a little bit of sense about the weight, I'm not going to constantly bring up the fact that they're that that they're overweight. I'll probably dance around with it, which is probably going to also make the make the fucking the situation obvious that they're overweight if every time <laughs> fat uh, fat people come up you suddenly get really awkward around them and don't say anything like it's like you might as well say it. you've already said it there and yeah i think like like in terms of because like fat shame is kind of a become like a very broad term for the subject and some things that necessarily i think are okay have been criticised of being fat shaming, such as TV shows like Ireland's Fittest Families or even Operation Transformation. Contestants sign up themselves where they have to lose a certain amount of weight in a week and their progress is monitored and they're given like a personal trainer, a psychologist, as well as a nutritionist to help them reach their goals. And basically they talk about their struggles with their diets and basically the struggle so far. And these shows I f- I find are helpful and aren't fat yeah, shaming. Like I I don't think I wouldn't count that as fat shaming because like they're actually like looking. You know they've reached out they've looked for like help of something they've gone I've tried this on my own and I can't do it. Yeah, now they have to stand in their bra and underwear, um, on a weighing scales, in front of like the nation because it's on RTE. People are going but again, to be these, these are things that they know before they sign yeah, up. Yeah, it's not like they know what they're getting into. They've seen this is a long running TV show that's on Ireland. Like they know what they're getting into and still they want to be on the show. So I kind of can like, like once again, I think generally these, these shows do give helpful advice, do give ways like that. Maybe you don't have to do a Jocko Willing workout to maybe get an exercise in. Even just getting a person to start doing exercise could get them on the ball rolling to them, maybe get more into exercise themselves. Like doing like an intense workout. It could be just like doing five push ups a day and just them consistency doing that those five push ups will mo- motivate them to like do like maybe ten the next day or like just get into exercise. Just one small change could be enough to get a person into it. So like I don't really think like but then there's also the case of celebrities who are overweight, who lose weight and then get criticised for losing weight. Adele is one one of those singers who lost an incredible amount of weight and looked fantastic. And after she did it, was got a whole lot of backlash 
of fans because she was seen as this plus size role model to these uh, mm-hmm. these women. Well, surely she should be even more of of a plus size role model. The fact that she is this successful mother at the time, successful singer who struggled with her weight and was able to lose weight. Surely you should use her as an inspiration instead of criticizing her for like improving her health. Yeah, like there's a few people like when um, when Meatloaf lost weight, people said his voice changed. Yeah, and he wasn't he wasn't as good of a singer. Or Kelly Osborne recently lost a lot of weight, and people are saying like, "Oh, she looks good, but she looks like anorexic." And you know, like <laughs> there's there's no winning. Yeah, there there really isn't women because you winning here, and you get you get from the other side as well, like guys who are incredibly ripped for movies, go on holidays, and they're they're criticized for having dad bods, or getting fat, and they're like these like fucking gossip magazines like will show photos of them in the most unflattering way possible. So I know like celebrities have like an awful amount of time trying to like stay in shape all year round in case some fucking paparazzi prick comes along with folks <laughs> with like with like a slight belly. Yeah, like uh I don't know. I don't know why people can't just let everybody be themselves and do whatever. Yeah, like it's different if someone comes to you and is... if somebody comes to you and says, "Look, I I I want help doing this," or do you have any tips for doing this? Or you're after like losing six stone there in the last four years. I want to do the same. Like then, okay, yeah, yeah. Like generally, like like we said, like people who are overweight are painfully obvious to them that they're overweight. And by you saying, "Oh, you're fat," or "You're overweight," or "You you should do something about," it, you're not really helping the situation. Generally, what will happen is they're they're probably going to feel even worse about themselves, and yes. probably like eat binge eat because they want some comfort food, and that's what happens when like basically these people probably have have some form of eating disorder where they use food to eat as a as comfort. As uh, that basically you get a bit of serotonin when you get a bit of something sweet, so your body wards that food as a treat. So you can't, anytime you feel bad, you want that kind of little spark of joy, so you'll eat something. So like I generally think that's what you're you're going to force people into probably gaining more weight by pointing out the fact that they're, that they're uh, that they're overweight. You're going to make them feel worse about themselves. Is there like do it? Do you ever do you think there is a time where? Maybe uh, if you're if you're a partner, or maybe you you see a friend and that they're they are gaining weight, and you're just concerned. Would you ever approach them and say, "Here, like you should really look at that," or like, or is that is should that be even up to you? Should you like is that uh, just... like right? If you're in a situation where you're doing something that's like fairly minimal effort, like uh, exercise wise, like uh, an example. I went to an, an Ireland like football match in the Aviva Stadium with my friends. Just, like probably maybe six months before I started like training jujitsu and stuff. And walking up the stairs, and one of these guys like a fairly heavy smoker. Walking up the stairs, I was fucking knackered. I was out of breath by the time we got to our seats. Yeah. And the other two lads were fine. Like we weren't like running up the stairs or anything. Just walking up the stairs, like I was fucked. Yeah. Like, now, I wasn't overweight around that time. It was just, like, really, really unfit. Like, if if somebody turned around at that stage and said, you know, you kind of need to do something about that. Like, yeah, okay, probably do. But, like, if it's just, like, your friend has put on a bit of weight and whatever, like, who cares? Unless it's, like, drastically impacting their health or their mental health or... yeah. I think obviously there's every person is going to be a different situation here. As soon as soon as you see a friend that's putting on weight, I wouldn't say it's ne- it's the time to like necessarily go about go about criticizing them or go about pointing out like a little bit of weight. It's like who cares? They could just be going through a thing right now. They could be like stress, whatever. They're putting a bit of weight. I wouldn't like a little bit of weight wouldn't be that at uh, that point. The only time I, like where I might I might say it to a friend. It's where I I really feel like the person is putting himself at like a health risk, like in a very short amount of time, be suffering from diabetes. Like if they were morbidly obese, or they were, or you could see that they're on their way. Maybe you could see what their dad looked like, and 
Let me see what your dad looks well, you know, like. like. You know, some some genetics are bad or whatever. And you can kind of see where, look at heart disease or runs in your family. Like, okay, I've, uh, I remember saying this is like people that are closer to me and saying, look at, that's that's you in the future there. Like that that that's that's what you'll be if you don't take care of yourself. At the time, like at the time, it was it wasn't a person who was overweight. It's just that like that they they just didn't take care of their diet and like their parent was like was suffering from like arthritis in the legs. Was like barely able to walk and was just like was just had a really unhealthy. And I said, like, that's that's what you are going to be in the future if you don't take care of yourself and it was more of a place of concern look that that should be like evidence enough for you to like not want not want you to go down that road and i think when it's something where you can show that it's a bit it's just an area of concern not that's like if a person puts on a little bit of weight it doesn't mean that they're going to die of heart disease that that that, that, you don't have to mention that to your friend if you see that they put on a little bit of weight I think if it's point where it's coming like where it's heart disease uh, level or it's like they could be suffering from diabetes or if they're starting to get unwell and maybe they develop a cough or they develop breathing problems is is when I start seeing like health risks is where I'd say to someone here look at you should, you really need to start like looking after yourself like yeah like that's the other thing like it kind of has to do with um intent as well like if you know, like, like they say fat shaming. Like, it's only kind of fat shaming if you're doing it in a malicious way. I think. The way I would put fat shaming is fat shaming is where you're just you're literally calling someone fat for the sake of putting the, that person down, and it's not necessarily you're not really you're not really saying giving them any great advice. It's just saying you're fat, get over it, or ha ha ha, you're fat, I'm skinny. I got the genetic profile here over you. Yeah, you dickhead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like exactly. You know, when I was a kid, I had the world's worst diet. Like I, I would eat so much crap, and I just had a fast metabolism. Generally, my parents were both thin, so I, I was more likely I was gonna be okay. If like if a, like a person with a slightly worse genetic profile than me ate the same amount of thing, they'd probably be more probably obese. In terms of like that, I did hit the lottery that way. And there's some people that would eat maybe not as bad as I did when I was a kid and have more weight. So, like, you can just be unlucky with your genetics as well. Like, it can be a case of where you have poor genetics. And let's, let's face it, no one in Ireland has ever taught about nutrition. or never really sat down and told, look, this is this is what you need to eat, be eating. All, is, all you're ever told is fruit and veg, fruit and veg, fruit and veg. <laughs> you sound like Borat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like I, I i think yeah obviously it's never okay to put just put a person down based on their way if it comes from a, a, a genuine bit of concern hopefully when you say that to the person it comes through like that you're literally concerned about the person and it's come from like a pla- a good place rather than you're just literally putting the person down making them feel bad like again it kind of depends as well on whether it's like a total stranger somebody you only kind of know or like a really good friend oh yeah like generally you'll you should only say to like people who you're pretty like family members and good friends are probably like if you're just like a random person in the gym and they came down and go man i'm really concerned about you and you're like who the fuck are you <laughs> yeah like if if you wouldn't tell that person that they were really really smelly you shouldn't be telling them that they're fat yeah, 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 exactly. Like, like if you haven't ever slagged them about anything before, and like you probably shouldn't be telling them. Yeah, like it, it, you should use a rule of thumb. Have I ever made a joke about about this person or at this person? Yeah, isn't? yeah. I would like it, and it's also know about like how sensitive they're around the topic would be probably also a good thing. If it's something that like necessarily they've you know it's a touchy subject you're gonna to have to be very very careful around it because obviously they are gonna be more likely to be offended but like generally like maybe that person is trying to lose weight and to be, might be a little bit like shy to ask for help and by you bringing it up it might start to ball rolling but like generally speaking once again direct them to a nutritionist direct them to someone who actually knows what they're talking about don't fucking give them some bullshit advice that you've heard off the internet yeah or like invite them to like 
exercise with you. Yeah, exactly. That'd be another way of doing it. Like, oh, here, I'm going to go be going for a walk. Or, I'm uh, here, look, I think you might be really good at, like, jiu-jitsu. Or, here, do you want to go, yeah. do you want to get back into Gada together? Or, like, we could do it together. Or, let's start boxing. Or, you just, yeah, you could do it that way as well. If you're really concerned about them, surely you can invest uh, the time to train with them. And if not, don't yeah. probably say to them. Or if you're not, everybody to try jiu-jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say to that much people. I'm just, I'll, I'll say to some people, but, like, other people I'll be like, ah, no. I'll have the superpower against you forever. Like, I say to anybody who, like, ever asks me about training, I'm like, yeah, come down and try it. Like, there, I'll, I'll, like people who maybe care, or, like, girls, I, I'll say to, like, oh, you should try jiu-jitsu if they work in care facilities. Or it's like, every, every girl should try jiu-jitsu because it's really good for yeah. self-defense off your back. So if you ever... Like, you, you never really want to get into, it, like, a punching mat where, like, where a person who's heavier and stronger than you. But yeah. if you can get them onto the ground where they can't strike it, and you can also choke the life out of them, like, pretty good skill. And, yeah, you're in a pretty good situation. Yeah, you're in a pretty good situation. So I, I say to, like, maybe people who might be in harm's way a lot, I say, like, you should definitely learn jiu-jitsu. But I wouldn't, like, some of my friends I'll say to, like, like good people friends. People who are in harm's way. Yeah, people who are, like, maybe guards or, like, I know, I know a few people who are, like, nurses in homes where maybe the, pe- the people will act out like they have autism or they have some form of, like, d- disorder where they might be attacked or they have been attacked in the past. I'd, I'd say to them, like, here, you should really change jiu-jitsu. And they're like, oh, we can't harm them. And it's like, well, yeah, jiu-jitsu, you can... You can like just take the person to the ground, and you can like hold yeah, them where they can't the move. Situation. Yeah, you can just yeah. you basically control the situation. And, like I think even like SVG uh, headquarters in Dublin has free wi- women self defense classes. Oh, yeah, free women. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a great idea. Um, but yeah, I don't know how we got into self defense <laughs> from Fat Shaman. Yeah, no, we just, we just kind of threw it in there for the crack. You throw it in there for the crack. Anyway, that's our show for uh, for this week. <laughs> We went a good bit over time, but ah, you got a little bit extra this week. Uh, of send us random shit. Yeah, please. If you <laughs> find any weird stories, send them our way. Shall I talk at gmail.com. Also, if you have an uh, opinion on the fat shaming, send it into us. Uh, Shall I talk at gmail.com. Shall I talk podcast show at gmail.com. I don't I don't know why I still haven't learned this email. Uh, you can also find us on at Shall I talk show on Facebook and Twitter, and you can send us a message directly and get your thoughts and opinions in and you know we'll, re- we'll readdress the situation if you send them in but yeah odd stories would be much appreciated and until next week we'll talk to you then good luck see ya shut up and sit down